All right. Uh, now we're going to do the linear elastic fracture mechanics experiments with three chopsticks. The chopstick, it's uh, to me a very nice example of a fracture because it resembles a fracture. Let me go a little bit further, going from, from here, from let's say the wellboard where these two tips uh, separate, going to the tip of the fracture, which is uh, right here on the, the, the right side. So you can notice that the, the two pieces of wood are joined over there. So this is going to be actually our tip. And if you were to separate the chopstick, getting them further from each other, that's what we're going to call an open mode fracture. So make sure that you keep in the same plane the, the two sticks. And that's going to be an open mode fracture. Okay, don't open it too much so you don't break it. But the concept here is that the stress intensity that you apply here on the tip of the chopstick is going to be proportional not only to the force with which you separate these two sticks, but also to the length at which you apply the force. You could also relate this concept to, for example, the concept of a lever, right? Uh, you know that the, the longer the, the arm that you use uh, to leverage a, a force, the higher the force is going to be applied on the other end of the lever. Well, in this case, it's, it's quite similar. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to increase the force until you fracture these chopsticks. But, but wait a minute, don't do it yet. Because the, the first thing I'm going to ask you is to try to do this. Let me switch the side. It's going to be easier. I'm going to ask you to do this by trying to pull from a distance very close to the tip. And, and you're going to see that it's pretty hard to, I'm trying to break it, but, but, but I can't, okay? I'm pulling from the two sides in what is called an open mode. Remember with the sticks uh, in the same plane and uh, it, it's pretty hard. Uh, why? Because the stress intensity is not enough. Why? Because the length, the distance from here to there is not that large. However, if I go a little bit further, you're going to find that it's easier to open these two sticks. And also, the stress intensity created at the tip of the fracture here is going to be higher. And, uh, you know, let's go now to the process of breaking the chopsticks, but start first with a short distance and see if you can pull it. Try to apply the same force from each side. And if you cannot pull it, then just uh, uh, do, not, do not try to apply a, a high force and that uh, you might hurt yourself or your fingers, but just move a little bit more and then try again and see if that force is enough to break the chopsticks. Remember always for this exercise, when you are open it, opening the chopsticks, keep them in the same plane. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to break mine. So when I get to the maximum stress intensity, then the fractures are going to propagate and uh, I'm going to get the two pieces out of the, uh, uh, each, these are instead of one piece, are going to be two pieces. On my fracture, you could inspect your fracture if it's planar or not. My, my one is pretty close to, to planar. Not exactly, but, uh, but it is. So this is what it was, and this is what it is uh, right now. So what we were doing before, as I was telling you, it's what is called an open mold fracture. And it's what happens also with a, a fluid-driven fracture in which you pressurize the faces of the fracture and you 
and you move the faces of the fracture further apart. And what that creates is in a state of tension, almost pure tension here at the tip of the fracture. And that was, that's what makes the fracture propagate. And notice that your fracture is going to go in the direction of your uh, previous uh, fracture. So you're just open it, but it, continu it continues propagated in the same plane. Okay. Uh, if you check a figure, uh, let me see in my notes. Uh, actually, this was before. Let me find it. Just one sec. Uh, this is going to be in section 48. This is going to be figure 422. In figure 422, uh, we have uh, the three modes of fracturing. The first one, open mode, we just did it. And we're going to do now the other two modes. Mode uh, two in plane shear and mode three out of plane shear. So for that, then you might use the other two chopsticks. I'm gonna get the second one. Um, remember here, let me go this way. An open mode fracture would be the one in which your chopsticks get, uh, get away from each other in the same plane. Now let's go with mode two. This is in plane shear. In order to apply in plane shear, what I would have to do is to push this chopstick in the direction towards the tip and pull this other one in the direction opposite to the tip. So it's gonna go in this direction, keeping always the chopsticks in the same plane, all right? And uh, this one is a little bit more difficult to do. So let me get the tip a little bit closer to here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's say, push in this direction and pull in this other direction. So uh, if you try to do it close to the tip, uh, you're, you're going to see it's nearly impossible unless you're super strong. Uh, but don't try to, don't hurt yourself, okay? So just try to do it from a position further away. And uh, I'm trying to do that, okay? So let me get closer. I'm trying to apply that force. And still, it's, it's pretty hard to me to, to do that. So if you cannot do it, uh, don't worry, okay? Uh, don't, don't, don't hurt yourself again. But uh, it, it's gonna be pretty hard because you're trying now to propagate a fracture, not in open mode, but in shear. And in shear, it's a lot more difficult. So uh, in my case, applying a reasonable amount of force, I wasn't able to, to break it. But that's okay, that's okay, don't worry. The toughness in mode two of, the, of wood is, is higher than the toughness in mode one. Uh, so it's okay, I'm gonna give up with this. But instead of, of doing that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the mode three. And the mode three is what is called out of plane shear. And in out of plane shear, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the, the two chopsticks further from each other, but in the plane perpendicular to the plane in which the chopsticks are. So this is the plane of the chopsticks. Now you see more or less like right, like one line. If you pull the chopsticks far from each other, but in perpendicular direction, that's going to be that's going to be out of plane shear. Okay, notice that these two chopsticks, uh, when I look at them on the plane perpendicular to this one, they are still the distance between the the chopsticks. Uh, it, it didn't change. 
It's just in the perpendicular direction that I have applied this displacement. So remember, mode one would be like this. Mode three is going to be like this. But, but now you cannot see the displacement unless you rotate this 90 degrees and now you see that they are further from each other. So let's try to do the same exercise, trying to break them, getting close to the, to the, to the tip and, and trying to apply a force, shear out of plane. Again, you get very close, it's pretty tough. Uh, you get a little bit further, but again, try to keep always the, the chopsticks without separating in the plane perpendicular to this one. And, and in that case, at some point, the chopsticks are going to break. Now this is a lot, a lot tougher than the previous one, but eventually, oh, look at that. It was too much of the toughness. I broke one of my chopsticks and uh, the, the fracture didn't propagate. So it was tough enough that uh, the tension here, the chopsticks, it was that, uh, that uh, got to the yield stress before uh, I got to propagate the fracture. All right, so a failed experiment. Uh, don't worry, it always happens. Okay, so we have done then the, the three types. I, I didn't manage to propagate the, the fracture here, but don't worry. Uh, but we have seen at least how we get to these three modes, one mode one, mode two, and mode three with the chopsticks. Mode one, mode two, you cannot really see anything, but I'm applying the stress and mode three. Okay, usually when, when you go to, to a restaurant and if you have chopsticks, what you do is you just simply, you pull them uh, without caring about if you're in plane or out of plane. And actually when you're doing that, you're doing what is called a mixed mode fracture propagation. Because notice that if you just pull without caring about in which plane your displacement is, your chopsticks are going to open in a direction which is a combination of in plane and out of plane. And that's what is called a mixed mode. And in this case, it's going to be a mixed mode one and three. And that mixed mode is actually makes it a lot easier for these uh, chopsticks to, to break. Okay. Take away message for analogy with fracturing. The longer the fracture, the easier it's going to be for that fracture to propagate with all the same properties. The shorter the fracture, the higher the pressure that you're going to need to propagate that same fracture. But as long as the fracture gets long enough, there is a point in which uh, in a, geological applications and hydraulic fracture applications, the strength of the rock, sometimes it doesn't matter anymore because the fracture is so long that the stress intensity is high enough so that the pressure in the fracture is, uh, is already enough together with the fracture, the length of the fracture to propagate the fracture without any problem. And actually we're going to see in some of our models that we do not care about the fracture toughness of the rock because we're assuming that we are already at that condition in which the fracture is long enough that the fracture is going to, the rock is going to fracture uh, no matter what the pressure is in the fracture. 